Okay, let's try this again. That means I gotta take another screenshot. And books are flying. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and today I have a thriller and a horror book haul. I've been kind of accumulating some books over the past month and a half, I guess. Of course, I've been in the spooky vibe. So I've been picking up all the things spooky. So I have a little bit of a haul for y'all. My first book is a borrowed book from my friend Debbie. She read it and she absolutely loved it. So she gave it to me for me to read. And that is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. I know this is a young adult horror. It consists of clowns and it consists of a cornfield. <laughs> That's about all I know about it. It says on the front, the kids are not all right. Quinn Maybrook just wants to make it to graduation. She might not make it to morning. I don't really want to like, lately, I know I've read the synopsis before, but I, I don't really want to, to do that. I want to like go into these books blind. But Debbie loved it. I've heard mixed, mixed things. I've heard some people say that it was okay. And I always love to throw in a good young adult thriller, horror, whatever it is into the mix of all my other like, adult books. So keeping in with the young adult horror, I have Horrid by Katrina Leno. Again, I don't know much about this book. I know, I think it consists of a haunted house where strange things starts to happen. I think maybe, I don't know. On the back it says, Jane's fingers were numb. Was she ready to admit now that she believed in? The word was still so hard to say. It was silly and childish. It was white sheets with eye holes cut out and grainy pictures of disembodied heads and bumps in the night when you're home alone, all tucked in bed and frozen with fear. Ghost. So I'm guessing this is like a um, haunted house kind of ghost story, but I love the cover. I've seen it uh, floating around on Instagram. Haven't really heard much about it on BookTube, but I thought the cover was beautiful when I saw it. So I went ahead and I picked it up because I knew it kind of had like a haunted house kind of vibe to it. And I'm all about some haunted houses. Getting back into adult, I only have one adult horror book, which this one I'm really excited about because I've really been, really been enjoying some Grady Hendrix. Uh, his writing style is just, it's just fun and quirky. So I picked up Horror Store. I love that it's like an Ikea magazine kind of thing, but yet there's like horror pictures on the wall and the back is sort of like the same scene, just more of like a haunted kind of version of it. I don't know what this is about either. I don't know if like people go into like this store. I mean, it's got like order forms. Oh, it's, it's not gonna come out. But this is like an order form, and then it goes into like pricing. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I can't wait to get into this. I mean, you got like pictures of furniture for your chapters. It's just, it just looks so much fun. And I mean, I know a horror book is not supposed to be fun, but I mean, come on. Um, Let's just see if it gives us a little bit of what this is really. So the store is called Orsk. Something strange is happening at the Orsk Furniture Superstore in Cleveland, Ohio. Every morning, employees arrive to find broken bookshelves, shattered water goblets, and smashed wardrobes. <laughs> Sales are down, security cameras reveal nothing, and store managers are panicking. That's all I'm gonna read but um it just it just sounds really fun so i can't wait to get into that one all right my other two books are uh just adult thrillers and these are both recent releases uh so the first one i picked up is confessions on the 745 by lisa unger ever since i read that little short story i still haven't picked up any more of her short stories but i saw i started following her on instagram and I saw that she was coming out with a with a novel. So I went to Barnes the day it came out and picked it up because I, I knew I had to have it. And once again, I bought this completely just because of the author. I have no idea even what it's about. 
It says, be careful to whom you tell your darkest secrets. Selena Murphy is coming home from her job in the city when the train stalls on the tracks. She strikes up a conversation with a beautiful stranger in the next seat who introduces herself as Martha. The woman confesses that she's stuck in an affair with her boss and Selena in turn confesses that she suspects her husband is sleeping with the nanny. When the train arrives at Selena station, the two women part ways, presumably never to meet again. But days later, Selena's nanny disappears. There's some more, but we're not gonna read it. So it looks like two women confess to each other on the train. Things start to happen. I don't know, we'll, <laughs> we'll get into it. But again, I loved Lisa Unger's writing just in that little bitty short story. And I, I cannot wait to see what else, how else she can um, make me love her writing even more. And then this is Don't Look For Me uh, by Wendy Walker. This was actually, I, I don't think I've ever read a Wendy Walker. I don't know if I even have a Wendy Walker on my TBR shelf back there, but uh, I saw this on John Fran's Instagram um, and he was sort of promoting the book. So, and it, it, I love for one, I was drawn to the cover. So I was like, well, let's see what kind of taste John Fram has in, you know, in other books. So I didn't even know, I, I don't know what it's about once again. So let's see if it says, gives us a little short synopsis. It says, in Wendy Walker's thrilling novel, Don't Look For Me, the greatest risk isn't running away, it's running out of time. One night, Molly Clark walked away from her life the car abandoned miles from home, the note found at a nearby hotel, the shattered family that couldn't be put back together. It happens all the time. Women disappear, desperate to leave their lives behind and start over. She doesn't want to be found, or at least that's the story. But is that what happened to Molly Clark? That's all I'm gonna read. That's like their little bitty first little synopsis. So someone that goes missing, possibly on her own, just to get away and start over. We don't know, uh, we're gonna find out. But I'm really excited for all these books. Don't know if I'll be able to get to them in the month of October, because I already have a TBR that I don't know if I'll be able to get through. I haven't really been sticking true to my TBR so far this month, uh, except for the Southern Guide to, Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires was on my TBR to read. But some of the other book, books I've picked up so far this month haven't really been on my TBR. I'm kind of playing this month by ear just because I want to read all the things spooky, but yet I don't know what I want to read because I have so many spooky books right now. Um, but that's good. We can we can read spooky all year long. It just, it just seems to be so much better in the month of October. But that's my horror slash thriller haul for today. I have a few more books that um, I did accumulate over the last month and a half that I still want to share with y'all, but I wanted to, I wanted to share the spookiness first. Me and Michael Myers, my little, my little Michael Myers. He's gonna share all the spookiness with you. All right, that's it, y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. As always, I'll have these books listed down below if you want to check them out for yourself. If you have any spooky book recommendations for me, let me know in the comments down below. And I hope you're all doing well, having the best October ever so far. Hugs from me all around, y'all, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all.